I want to welcome all of you to our divine service. Uh, before I speak, uh, I just, uh, it's just something that I always like doing before speaking and I get an opportunity, is to tell you a little bit about the story of the children in Kenya uh, through the organization that we run, ECHO. Uh, this week we were privileged to get an opportunity, which is very rare to get, to speak to uh, some donors who are looking into helping us to extend this, uh, the ministry in Kenya. So I would like to just take you through uh, what I shared with them and uh, because a lot of people here are supporting uh, this mission and I usually don't get an opportunity to update you. And so I'll just go very quickly because uh, it's a long, I had to show them a, a lot of stuff. So this is, this is how the school started. It was in the church, there were those number of children and one teacher and Sister Ronell paid for this teacher. She kindly paid her wages every month. And we started feeding them and these children started coming from the village to join the school because there was a feed. And uh, it expanded, you know, because of the feeding. <laughs> we got so many children, we had no idea where to take them. And so we started building those temporary structures you see there, you know, like the mud structures you see there. And uh, it, it became a school. We realized we have a school, so at that time there were two teachers, and uh, it expanded and expanded, and it was time for us to actually think of giving them a proper school, because the church was getting crowded, they were, it, was, it was not working, so it was not going to work. So we started building this school with the help of some uh, benevolent people in Australia and some members of this church, and we thank you very much, because the work went very well, and uh, as you can see, you know, it really went fast, and uh, that was what came out of it. And we were very grateful because the children, after that they had to build the toilet block, and uh, after that, that's the toilet block. Then they had to build a water tank because there was no water. And uh, we designed, I designed that water tank to carry 70,000 liters of water. I didn't think they would do it. They had never done it before, but lo and behold, they did it. They figured it out, and they built it. And right now, this water tank, that's, <laughs> there it is, at the back there, it's holding 70,000 liters of water, provides all the water that goes to the toilets, that they drink, all the water that they need around the year. So it's an amazing thing. And then we had to open the school. And one of the ladies in Australia who lives in Belfast came to help us with her partner. She wrote that ni nice message, you know, uh, for the children. And uh, it, it was a very poignant day when we were opening the school. We were planting trees. It was, uh, the children were excited. Everybody was happy. It was a big occasion. They did parties. So that's the chief of the village also planting a tree. Uh, those were like the dignitaries that <laughs> were invited to grace the occasion. Uh, those were speakers from the Ministry of Education in Kenya, in our county. And uh, we all had a good time that evening. And uh, it went well. And that is the head of education who is representing the Minister of Education to open, to cut the ribbon. And the gentleman beside him is the president of the SDA conference in our region. And he was sponsored by Sister Judy here to become a pastor. And uh, it's an amazing thing that uh, God lifted him up and now he's the president of the conference. And it went well. It went well. The children were happy. Everybody was happy. Uh, we had a lovely time. The parents then came to apply for their children to join the school. And uh, that is the day that we opened the school. Day one, all the kids in the village wanted to join the school. <laughs> we could only take so much. So we, we had to screen them a little bit, you know. And uh, the, the, that's the deputy head teacher. She worked very hard and uh, with the help of her teachers, they managed to screen that lot. I think 200 people managed to get in. And uh, they were excited, no uniforms, just come as you are, they came, and uh, the school took off, you know, by the grace of God. It was just amazing to see. And the classrooms are very well lit, they're spacious, and the children love it, they just stay there the whole day. And it was important for us to feed them, you know, and uh, make sure they are all, new. that's the head teacher there in his office. Uh, he's, a, he's a fantastic guy who's trained in Sweden, and he's got special education qualifications. He works very hard to, he loves the school, he loves those kids. And uh, we appreciate so much what he does. Who are the teachers? We have 14 teachers uh, who run this school. They work very hard. We really appreciate them. 
And uh, after COVID, we could not contain the numbers because other schools could not cope. So they came to our school, and that's why we had to rush and buy those chairs. <laughs> that's the story of those chairs. And uh, those, the ladies are being taken to their sanitary pad there. They have them in, uh, that because some of them never used these facilities. So we had to train them and uh, show them how to do things. They have a uh, sports team. Uh, education is going on well. That's our makeshift kitchen in the school. We have two cooks who cook for these children, and uh, they do a good job, and we appreciate them. So these kids get a meal every day. We've never missed a meal every single day because of your support. You know, the, 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 the amount of money we collect here actually goes for this feeding, and uh, we just set it aside for this feeding. And some of them, that's the only meal they have during the day. And uh, it's been like a magnet to bring them to school, you know, and... Uh, they really, really look forward to it. They, so we were collecting furniture, chairs from Australia here in containers, and this is, we were loading this container, and with the gram there, and Jeff, we shipped it over. And then it arrived in the village this day, and, uh, and the kids were happy to see, it, to see it, and that's how they offloaded it. Because of limited facilities, that's how they offloaded it. It's not easy. And then we, re we decided to use those containers to build more room. And they designed those trusses there, and they put up that roof. That guy designed that roof. He's never been to a building school or anything. Now that I'm studying building, I realize how smart that guy is. He, he, that's not easy to build. In Australia, you need an engineer to design that. And uh, he's never been to any college or anything. He designed that roof, and he got it right. You know, the pitch, everything, the trusses, the brackets, the webs. And it bears the, the load. He put the anti termite, whatever lacquer on it, put an iron tin roof on it, and look at it. You know, brilliant work. Because they're dedicated, they just want the school for their children. And then they did the floor. This was our desperate attempt to create more space, you know? And they did the floor well, look. And now they're using that floor. Uh, this is during a week of prayer when they, they go around and pray in every home. The kids also get their special day, and they pray for them there. They do a service at that hall, the container hall. They teach them about sanitation and everything, the COVID thing. Although not a single kid, we don't have any single kid who has COVID in that school. Not even the teachers, not even the villagers. You know, they do social distancing, everything, but they just hear it in the news. They've never had it. We had a problem with uniforms, so we decided to make them at the school. So we brought in these tailors, and they made those uniforms. And uh, that's what we came up with, with Aussie colors. And uh, we wanted to maintain that and the quality. And uh, that was the first model, who bought, model for us, our uniforms. <laughs> Proudly modeled that uniform. And uh, these kids love these uniforms. They love them. They wear them even at home. <laughs> they just don't get tired of it. So you can see that this school has changed their lives. They're really happy. And we thank you so much. They plant trees around their school. We involve them in all these activities. Uh, it's, it's a vibrant uh, community now. Uh, we have about 300 children now coming to the school, about 300 of them. And uh, they've got a big space. They run around. They've got a garden as well. They, this provides all the vegetables they need, even for the villagers to pick. It's a lot of uh, veggies. There are four types of veggies. They have kales, they've got pumpkin leaf, and they've got uh, two other types which are indigenous. Uh, I missed that. So we also take them to, to, for camping. I think we are the only school in the region who does camping. So we, we, set, we set up a, a, a camp at the Masai Mara, which is a really, really creme de la creme of safari, of game safari. The first thing they do when they go to the camp is this, we show them how to make a tent. They don't, they don't find it set up for them. We don't put anybody to do it. They have to do it. So they learn how to put up tents, the boys and the girls. And they put up these big, we call them glamping tents. They are so massive. You know, you can put in two beds in there, you know. <laughs> They're so big. And those are their teachers in their tent. And uh, they set this. They, that's the day they have arrived. They have set it up. They go for their dinner. They, they are very proud. This is usually the class that is leaving. They, we do this for them. And uh, it is very expensive to go to this region, Masai Mara. You know, we, we, we realized the reason we did this was because we realized only children from Loma Linda and wherever were coming here, and our children were missing out, so we did this for them. And they stay there for one week. They go, that's the gate to the Masai Mara, and they see all these animals. Animals are everywhere, you know. 
And this, these guards, they love them. You know, they, they, they teach them about animals, about environment, about preservation. That is the wild beast migration and uh, crocs and the kids just have a good whole day driving. You can drive in that camp the whole day, you'll never finish it. So many animals, the big five are there. So they get the top cream of tourism as Kenya can offer. They really enjoy that. I would, en I would encourage the youth here to come over. Uh, you, know? you can stay in this camp and uh, enjoy this. You know? uh, it's, it's a beautiful experience to have. Those are hippos, there's a hippo pool. And this guy was teaching them not to hunt animals in their village, not to kill them, to preserve them. And the kids were asking questions. And now, because of that, we have a lot of monkeys in our village that they used to chase around. Now they love them. <laughs> the monkeys are now everywhere in our village. So they, are, they normally have a good time. We have, to, we have to hire a guard to be with them, just in case one of them you know, wanders around to the hippo. The hippos are very, very dangerous animals. Those are the wild beasts. So that trophy is a very prestigious trophy that uh, usually 16 schools compete for it. And our children went there the last two years for the first time, and that girl topped everybody. She was the best, and they got the trophy. All our kids, they, they got the trophy. They, those, kids, those teachers do a very good job. Those kids are very brilliant. Look, they got the trophy. They actually got it twice. If they get it the third time, they keep it. So they were very happy, very, very happy. Uh, the whole village was happy. It went into a raptures song and dance and all these kids, even those who don't come to school, you know, they were cheering and happy and singing and, you know, it was just amazing that these kids who are in this sleepy village can now top everybody, you know. Their, their future is now bright, you know, they'll be doctors, they're engineers, they're lawyers there, you know. Some of them will come here, they, they, you know, they, they've got a bright future. So this day, they were doing a graduation. <laughs> they do graduations, believe it or not, for grade three. <laughs> and that is a, one of the elders of the church giving them a pep talk. And uh, it's, it's, it's a big occasion. They take it seriously and uh, they give them certificates and they gifts and everything. That is the committee that helps us to run the school. That's the class that was graduating. Uh, they even baked a cake for them, <laughs> Captain's Chess Academy cake, and uh, the kids enjoyed the cake, and that's their certificates that they're going to hang on the wall. And this is now their qualification results for the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education, where the pass mark is 250, and there were 18 kids who sat for that examination. Only one kid scored below 300, and that kid got 298. The rest were above 300. The pass mark is 250. So all of them are qualifying to go to secondary school. That kid is the one who scored the top. And the, the parents asked us the other day that can we help him to buy shoes because they will not accept him in the other school, in the secondary school without shoes. We don't know what to do. We, we've run out of money, you know? Because we just spent so much money in this school, we just can't buy them shoes. Last time we bought them shoes, but this time we cannot. So we thank you so much for your support. That's what your support does. It changes these people's lives. And uh, we appreciate you so much for this. Thank you.